Hello again, everyone. John Flynn here from Flynn Real Estate, serving Southern Ontario, based out of the Niagara region. Thanks, everyone, again, for tuning in and watching and all the great comments that you leave weekly. I try to read them all and respond to most. So again, thanks again. I was going to name this video Double Bubble for, you know, 2022 bubble and now the 2023 bubble that's not as big as 2022. But that's kind of wrong and incorrect because we've been in a bubble for quite some time. But anyway, let's start with what's the definition of a bubble. This definition is from Investopedia. What causes a housing bubble? Traditionally, housing markets are not as prone to bubbles as other financial markets due to the large transaction and carrying costs associated with owning a house. However, a rapid increase in the supply of credit leading to a combination of very low interest rates and loosening of credit underwriting standards can bring borrowers into the market and fuel demand. A rise in interest rates and a tightening of credit standards can lessen demand, causing the bubbles to burst. So pretty basic stuff, low interest rates, loose lending, bubble goes up or bubble gets created and interest rates go up, credit uh, tightens and the bubble bursts. A housing bubble is a temporary event, but it can last for years. Usually it is driven by something outside the norm, such as manipulated demand, speculation, unusually high levels of investment, excess liquidity, deregulated real estate financing market, or extreme forms of mortgage-based derivative products, all of which can cause home prices to become unsustainable. It leads to an increase in demand versus supply. So I'm sure you can correlate some of those things to what's happened recently. One of the other things I've thought about and I've actually read many times is how real estate kind of acts like a Ponzi scheme. Now it's a little far-fetched to say it is a Ponzi scheme, but there are some similarities. But it's more accurate, in my opinion, to say it's actually a pyramid scheme. So here's a little pyramid I drew myself. So pre-2013, not a lot of speculative activity. Prices were mainly for end users. Yeah, there was some investment, but they didn't have like crazy year-over-year -year gains. So I've kind of made that the benchmark or the beginning of the pyramid. Then you have the buyers that started jumping in 2013, especially in my area. And that was when... Prices kind of took off for the first time more than they would at a normal pace of, you know, three to 5% a year. I think we had some 10% years and stuff back then. Then you have the next level, 2016 to 2019. And of course, prices did go up in those years again, and a bunch more buyers jumped in. And finally, you have pretty much from the pandemic to now. So in my opinion, anyone that's jumped in at the bottom of the pyramid there recently, they are actually feeding all those people above them major amounts of of money and capital so you'll see that you know say the people in 2017 or 2018 that purchased they were further down the pyramid and it was kind of risky at that time but now compared to those you, they're laughing because they're taking the rewards and the profits and they're buying cars and more houses a lot of the time and i'm pretty sure none of those people have 30 40 and 50 year mortgages I mean, probably some of them do if they had uh, over levered themselves with other properties but in general, if they just owned the one property and they were jumped into the market in that time, they're probably okay. Might be a little worried about interest rates rising depending on their income right now, but uh, they're, they're not overextended. So I guess the gist of this pyramid is all the people at the bottom, which are 2020 to now, they're paying all the profits and, and whatever else and for the cars of all the people above. The people above are laughing. They got in at a good time. Yeah, the people at the bottom, they're paying for everyone else's life and lifestyle. And of course, a pyramid can only go on so long. Pretty sure it's ended now. We might see some more people jump in at this point. And also, there are people that have made money on the bottom level. They have bought and sold in these times. And of course, they've made money. But there's also people from the higher levels that have purchased in the lower level too and, and re-entered the pyramid. So yeah, I, I thought that was, again, it was more of a good correlation to a pyramid scheme or a pyramid system than it was a, a Ponzi scheme. Just a quick look at the mortgage payment comparison from the peak last year to February this year. I did it year over year instead of doing like, say, April now. I actually did post this earlier in the week on Twitter. I think there was a typo in the one part, but anyway, it's corrected. So in 2020, you had the average house price was 816000 with a good down payment, 25% down. There's your payment, $3,053 a month. Now with an average price a lot less at 686,000 and 25% down, you're paying an extra $140 a month. So your payment went up four and a half percent monthly. And also look at the interest. You're paying 50% more interest in that five-year term of the mortgage. Of course, now we're in April. So you're actually paying even more. 
and take into account, this was just based on fixed rate mortgage payments or interest rates. If you compare, say, a variable rate from the peak of 2022 to a fixed now, because most of those variables, if they had a true variable without a fixed payment, they would have locked in. You're paying significantly higher mortgage monthly payments or biweekly, whatever the case may be. Just a few quick headlines from during the week before I get into some stats from Ontario this week. I'm not doing the whole country because they're not ready. I will do the whole country next week or whatever is available. Many of the East Coast places won't be available. So if you don't see your place, please check back the week after. Starting with one from the UK, UK mortgage rates triple in nasty shock for homeowners. About 1.4 million mortgages will be refinanced this year, and most of them currently have rates below 2%. So I think they're looking at about a 6% now from 2%. Almost one third of Canadian homeowners with a mortgage now have amortization periods of more than 30 years. Yeah, we saw the one that was 72 years that you can find on Twitter. Opinion, 40-year mortgage terms will keep Canadians poor. Doesn't sound like a very good economic plan, that one. Bank of Canada considered raising interest rates at its last meeting. Millennials are fueling a generational housing bubble and it's set to pop in the next decade as demand drops, researchers say. There we go. Blame it on the young people. Don't blame it on the people making the policies, which are usually not the millennials. Canada's home prices haven't hit bottom yet, said CMHC. Mortgage insurers report growing number of homeowners with underwater loans. First Republic's jumbo mortgages brought on banks' failure. Of course it did. Same thing happened in 2008. Anyway, all the links for those articles, if you want to read them in full, are in the description of the video. All right, finally, moving on to some stats from this month or from April, I should say. These are from Ontario, the ITSO area that I always quote surrounding the GTA, 20 boards. Let's check them out. Average price. So the average price went up again, 4% month over month from March to April this year, $31,000. Pretty significant increase. It is still down 10.6% year over year from last April or 96,000. And it's down 17.8% from the peak or $175,000. And the trend line I drew from April shows that we're at either June 2022 price points or October 2021 price points. Now, the rest of these I want to dissect. I want to kind of put them into perspective. So we're going to start with new listings. New listings are down 31% from last April. Now, nationally, new listings were down to 20-year lows for March. So I'm going to say it's very similar for April in the ITSO area. So let's just kind of use that as a reference point that we are at a, a magnificent low, like 20 years or so. So we can't just look at new listings when we're looking at overall homes for sale because that is only new inventory. Now, new inventory is, in my opinion, the best inventory because it's new, it's fresh. And you know those are the ones that are exciting and, and haven't been on the market usually recently. Whereas existing inventory could be overpriced, could be going through price reductions. It's kind of stale. It's not as exciting and it's not as in high demand. So again, new listings are, is a very important metric, but let's look at all total homes for sale. So as opposed to new listings being down 31%, total homes for sale are almost 50%, 49% higher than they were last year. Expanding that out and looking at all the data back until 2010, you can see where we are, it's still a very low point, not as low as 2021 and 2022. Now, all those peaks on the left-hand side, all those high points, they're all June and July. That is when the number of home for sales peaks during the year on the market. It's very consistent. Every year, it's June and July. So I've added a target for 2023 where we should be or we may be in June or July. And you can see it looks like we are going to be at pre-pandemic levels and we're headed there very quickly. So looking at the number of sales, the sales were down 15.6% from last April. And again, we're going to expand that out to take a bigger look back to 2010. All those peaks prior to the pandemic were all May peaks, except for one or two, but they were still April or June. It was very close to May peaks. So we have usually May is when the number of sales peak. It's the most active month with the most sales. The pandemic we're going to ignore because it was such a strange year. That was July. But in the last two years, in 2021 and 2022, it was March peaks. This year, obviously, our peak is not going to be in March because we've already passed that in April. And it looks like the sales may be still rising, but we'll see in May. Taking a look at that same data on a different chart, this is just April. I had to produce this myself because they don't provide this data, but this is just April. It's the same data we just looked at, and you can see that it is the lowest number of sales in the last 13 years uh, with the exclusion of the pandemic. 
the average days on market. Again, this is not cumulative days because this stat is not included in these. It's up 145% from last year. And the last time it was close to this level or it was a little bit higher than this level was April 2019. So we're pretty much pre-pandemic days on market, but the average like long-term trend would be like closer to 50 or 55 in these areas that are reporting here. Months of supply or months of inventory, some people call it. You can see we're at three months. We're up significantly from last year and the previous year, 114% from last year. And the last time we had months of supply this high in April was April 2016. It was also the same three months of supply. And lastly, April average percent of last original list price. So what are homes selling for in comparison to their list price? We're at 99.5% right now, obviously not as high as around 110% for the last two Aprils. And for comparison, April 2019 and April 2018 were right around 99.1%. And April 2017, it was a very hot year in real estate in this area, 105%. So not abnormal for April to see some really good sale to list prices. So I get a lot of people ask me in the comments, should I buy now? I'm confused. What should I do? And again, you have to ask yourself, why do you want to buy now? Is it just you've been waiting to buy a house and, and you're getting you know restless? Uh, it's probably not a good reason to buy. Are you fearful that prices will go up further? Probably not a good reason to buy. If you've sold your house and of course you're moving, well, that's a great reason to buy. But if you buy now, you're going to be at the bottom of this pyramid here. Take a look. Here's another look at the pyramid. You're going to be paying all these people profits on top of you. My recommendation would be to buy in in that 2016 to 2019 range in this pyramid. It's a seller's market still, right? There's not a lot of listings. Buyers are competing. It's a time to sell. If you have an extra house to sell, I'm not going to tell you to sell your primary residence and go rent. But again... If you have an extra house to sell, now's the time to sell. It's a seller's market. It's not a buyer's market. So it's, it's very clear. If it's a buyer's market, then you buy. Everyone's in their own unique circumstances. So I can't just generally say, yes, you should buy or you shouldn't buy. But again, if you're on the sidelines and there's no urgency, a buyer's market is when you buy, not a seller's market. So again, when I put sell now in my comments or in my descriptions, it's because it's a seller's market and you should be selling. Take advantage of the increased prices. Now, the buyers are giving resistance. Last week on one of my listings, there was two offers, another one that was going to come in in between them, and they decided not to once they heard about the other or the second registered offer. They said, you know what? We don't want to compete. We're not doing it. So just now, before I started this video, I had an agent cancel on a showing. It was a new listing I just listed yesterday. There's a registered offer on it already from somebody from out of town. They've never seen the place. They actually put an offer and then they booked a showing after, which is outrageous because you haven't even seen the place. How do you know you like it? But anyway, one of the agents just canceled and they canceled because they don't want to deal with it. They don't want to deal with competing with houses. So again, we're not seeing anything like we saw last year where there was, you know, multiple offers, like 10 offers and stuff. Maybe in Toronto there is, but those 10 offers or 17 offers would have been 50 offers last year. But around here on our scale, we would see five to 10 offers on a property. Now we're seeing a couple and they want to walk away. Like half the buyers, they don't want to compete because they don't want to drive up the prices. They can't afford to drive up the prices. They're already maxed out with what they can pay, right? So look at the data. The data clearly shows the most listings or the most inventory is going to be in June and July. And the most sales are now are into May, right? So they're usually in April to May. So wait, wait a couple of months. If you, if you urgently need to buy, because for whatever reason, I would say, wait a couple of months and wait till there's more inventory and less demand, less sales. At least then you can enter into more of a sane uh, atmosphere where you can buy. Right. Anyway, that's it for this week and I'll see you next time.